Hi, I'm Dave Cross, founder of the Photoshop Virtual Summits. I want to share with you some of my thoughts about the brand new generative fill that was released just now by Adobe in the public beta version of Photoshop. Now, the chances are you've probably heard about this a little bit and you've even probably watched some of the other videos. So I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail about the basics of it because there's lots of great videos out there. I want to show you mostly what I found, how great it is to work with restoring old photographs. I've seen lots of other videos about some of the other things it does, but I want to take a, just a few moments to talk about that side of things. So just to very quickly do a quick overview, just in case you haven't seen, it's in the public beta, which you can get through the Creative Cloud. You have to, of course, have Adobe ID to do that. And then as soon as you open a photograph and make a selection, you'll see that in the little box that pops up, you can generate something. I'll show you really quickly and a couple of examples of what's possible to do with photographs, and then we'll get to the restoring photographs. You can see some of its benefits for that. So in this first example, I'm actually showing you the after photograph. This is the results of two things that I did using generative fill. So let me show you the original photograph. You can see it had some arrow signs in here and that photograph actually ended there. So I added extra canvas and then I just made a selection and I'll show you how I did it in a second. This is what it created. And I'm showing it to you first this way because one of the realities of this technique when you're using it is sometimes the results don't work perfectly the first time. And I wanna show you the result and then I also used it to remove the signs. So let me go back let me just crop this to the original so I can show you this very quickly. So this was the original photograph. I took my crop tool and then just dragged out to the side to say I want this much more canvas. I could have done that with the canvas size command as well. Then you just take the marquee tool. I just tap the letter M for marquee, select this area, and you'll see here's the little box that pops up. When you click on generative fill, you have the option of typing something in, but if you just wanted to do the equivalent of like a content aware fill, just click the generate button and then it's going to go through and generate that fill in that area with the content that it generates. Now it's important to note, unlike content aware fill that actually looks at surrounding pixels, this is using AI artificial intelligence to look at a database of images, machine learning, things like that to come up with an end result that it generates from those images, not just from the photograph. Obviously it looks at the photograph itself, but it does this generation automatically. And it usually takes anywhere from 10 to 15 seconds. And this is the result. You can see it's pretty amazing. It's looked at the surrounding areas, but it's also using its machine learning of landscape images in order to do that. So then I just did the same thing with these arrows. I just made a selection and then used that generative fill. Now you can do all kinds of things with this. For example, let's just on here, I'm just gonna take my marquee selection tool, make a selection, click on generative fill and type in gazebo. I haven't tried this, so let's see what it does. So once again, it's going to do this process of generating something automatically. Now you'll see that once it finishes, in the properties panel, some variations will appear. So there's the first one. You can see did a really good job of including the shadows. And then it's given me two other varieties that I can look work with. And I think I like this one. You can see that's done a pretty amazing job, hasn't it? So here's another example. Take my marquee tool, make a selection. And then in here, I'm gonna put uh, man, in safety suit from behind so you can type in a whole bunch of things with hands on hips and let's see what we get now there will be some times where you try things and it, you'll get something that says that it violated the guidelines because there are certain things you cannot use and there it'll take you to a link where you can see the kinds of things and the things you would expect. And that's what it generated. Let's see what the other varieties are. 
you can see it's one of the things that I think, find fascinating about this. I deliberately picked this photo because it has some color grading in it, and it's really interesting how good a job it does of keeping that in mind and doing things like making the shadows. So pretty, pretty remarkable. So let's talk about restoration. Here's a photograph from the World War I era. This is my grandfather here on the end. And I want to try and do a few things with this photograph to improve upon it, not the least of which is take off this handwriting on here, as well as maybe fix up some other things. So even though we're talking about generative fill, the first thing I'm going to try is the neural filters, because these ever-improving neural filters, there is one in beta which is called photo restoration. Now, I found through experimentation that photo enhancement, in this case, it would try to improve the writing by removing it, and it actually is going to end up causing me more trouble than help. And you can determine that, of course, by experimentation. So really what I want to do with this mostly is just remove the most noticeable scratches here. So it's going to take some time. So a lot of things with these will take a moment or two. But as I often say when I'm talking about things like this, compared to the alternative, how long it would have taken you to do things like scratch removal using traditional older Photoshop methods, this is still really quite fast. And the other thing to remember is that when the process is finished, one of the choices, as you'll see, is I can put the results on a new layer. So I still have the original photograph on a layer below. So if there's any areas that I don't like, I'm not, I'm not stuck with it. I have the ability to edit it by masking and combining the two images together. Uh, one thing I did find kind of interesting is it says there's only so many seconds left, and then it, that one second seemed to last a long time. So here's an example. I don't really want... I don't like the job it did with the removal of the text. So I'm going to actually, I'll just leave it and click OK because I did tell it to add a new layer. So one of the things I'm going to do here is go in to this area and add a layer mask. I'm going to hold down the Option or Alt key when I add the layer mask because I have another technique that I'm going to use generative fill for for this text. This did a pretty good job though of fixing the dust and scratches. The only thing I don't like is the shadow on this guy's sweater was a little bit odd because it was a realistic shadow but now it just looks like a rectangle. So I might go in here with my brush tool. Let's get it back to normal mode. Just try to make that shadow look a little more realistic. Okay, now in order to do things with generative fill, it won't work on a grayscale image. So I have to switch to RGB color and I don't want to flatten. I want to keep everything as is. So I want to use the crop tool. I'm going to hold down the option or alt key and drag outwards. I just want to add a little more room because I'd like to try to get a bit more of these two gentlemen on the end, my grandfather and this other gentleman over here. So once again, I'm just going to make a selection with my marquee tool, hold down the shift key. I could do it in two steps, one side and then the other. I'm just going to do it in one. And this is another case where you don't type anything in, just hit generate, and it's going to do its best attempt to fill in those areas in a realistic manner. As always, taking a little bit of time but once again, compared to the alternative of, I don't know how I would do it, honestly, find another photograph somewhere with another person maybe that I could steal their shoulder. So here's an example of the reality of this. This looks pretty good on this end, but I'm not exactly sure what it's doing here. Let's look at the other variations. Nope. And mm, no. So. I can say no thank you and get rid of those and try it again. And see if I get a better result. Needless to say, as is typical with filming videos, the first time I tried this, the results were pretty amazing. But I wanted to keep this to show you this is what can happen sometimes as you'll get results that 
you're just not quite sure what is happening. So just as an experiment, I'm going to go back to here. And let's see what happens if I do it in two separate steps, just to see if that makes any difference in the result. I have, don't really know if it will or not. As I mentioned before, when I tried this the first time, it worked beautifully, and the, the arms and shoulders of both men at each end were really quite perfect and quite exceptional. Well, that looks... I would could live with that. That looks pretty good there. So now let's go to this end and see what we might get. Hopefully it'll do a better job this time. Just let it roll. And I'm deliberately here not speeding things up. I want to show you real time what's happening without any editing out of terrible results because I want to show you the reality of how this can work really well, but every so often not as well. I think I would probably go with this first one, maybe just do a bit of editing, but that's a pretty good result there. Now, the final thing I want to try to fix is to remove this white text. So I'm going to start off by making a selection just slightly larger than this because there's an interesting little way to when you need to select something like this especially something that's so obviously white is you first make a selection to narrow down the area and then you go to select color range and now i can click on the white text you can see using the fuzziness slider i'm going to try to get it so it's just getting the text i don't want to go too far because now you see it's getting a whole bunch of the grass below so Something like that, possibly. Looks pretty good. Click OK. Expand the selection. I can use this same taskbar here. Expand the selection by one pixel. And now I can use Generative Fill. Once again, click Generate. And we'll see how it does in this case. And the only thing I did that's a little bit unusual perhaps is when I made this selection, I added just a bit, expanded just a bit. And you can see that did a pretty good job. It probably a couple of areas with some of their cleats that could still use a little bit of help. But again, compared to the alternative me, for example, cloning for an awful long time, it's pretty darn good. Now let's just see that in the background here, there was, I'm not sure if this young lad was like jumping up and down trying to get in the picture, but I think I might just want to say no thank you there. So I'm just going to make a lasso selection around these two and then do the same thing. Click that generative fill. Let it do its thing. And see what results we get. That one there looks pretty darn good. So just to review, let's pull this out of the way here. This was the original photograph, dust and scratches, and then remove those using the neural filters and then added that extra canvas, fix the text. Of course, I'd still have a bit more work to do with the where the tape was, but overall, pretty amazing and if you've done any work with restoration of photos you'll know the difference between this and an awful lot of time with the spot healing brush and the clone stamp tool and things of that nature to try and get to the same end result pretty amazing now the last example i want to show you is another old photograph where there's something that in the past was very difficult to fix and that's here this young lady when the photograph was taken you know, how they used to take those photographs where you, you couldn't move. Well, obviously she did. So they're all in decent focus except for her. So I've, I want to show you once again 
the results that I got because I was so happy with them. I don't want to risk showing you a result that didn't look great, but I'll then go through the steps. So the first one I did is I made a selection just around her and I used neural filter and specifically focused on the face, but then her hair was still kind of out of focus. So then I just made a selection, something like this and held down the shift key and made another selection here and then use generative fill and I typed in the word hair and that was the result that I got. So pretty amazing. So let me show you really quickly so you can see. Now I could do, probably should in fact, do neural filter on the entire photograph first and just do some photo enhancement and enhance the faces. And then what I might do is go back a second time and do a little more on just her face just to try and make sure that I'm getting uh, the best of both worlds. The initial ones, they all are improved a little bit. And once again, I would remind you, you're looking at this going, I know watching a video like this is not terribly interesting, but when you think of it in the context of how long it would have taken you otherwise, pretty amazing. So I'm going to make a selection of just her and then go back to the neural filters. And this time I'm gonna enhance the face a lot more. If you aren't familiar with the neural filters, these are ones that are updated quite often. They're still using a different style of artificial intelligence, but still machine learning where they're looking at many, many photographs uh, that of older images. I click OK. And now you can see that blurriness that was there is pretty much gone, but it's still evident in her hair. So I'm going to select roughly these areas. And I could try just clicking generate without typing anything in. And sometimes you'll get good results, but other times it may think that I'm trying to remove her hair. So we'll see what happens in this case, what it, how it's interpreting my lack of instructions here. So let's see there. Yeah, they're not great. So let's go in here and type in the properties panel hair and generate. So that's always an option rather than starting over again. You could start over, but in many cases you can just add a prompt and try it again. Let's see what we get this time. See if it's good as the previous time I did this before I started recording. Ooh, curly hair. That's interesting. So some really interesting choices there. I think I would probably pick this one. But once again, let's compare the original photograph with this, a combination of using neural filters and generative fill. So as I mentioned at the beginning, there's lots of videos out there. There are people showing really amazing results on what I would call regular photographs, but I want to show you some of the results that I've been getting in my initial tests when I thought, I wonder how this would work with image restoration. I think you'll agree that there's some great potential here. And for some types of images, it would just save you a ton of time or even do things that I'm not even sure how you would do them otherwise, such as missing body parts or missing parts of photographs. So I hope I gave you some ideas. I'm Dave Cross. Thanks for watching.